Hi, my name is William Shepley. This is my exhibition, The Equestrian West, at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. I've spent my life photographing the West and other places around the world and exhibiting my photography. I was born in North Hollywood, California, and I grew up in Van Nuys, California, a suburb of Los Angeles. Things were quiet. You, you just occasionally heard a, a Cessna flying over. And uh, it was very, just a typical childhood. We played in the streets. There wasn't any technology. Photography was in the family, and there was a lot of photographs around. About 1974, 1975, uh, my dad bought me my first camera and I just fell in love with it right away. At first I started photographing my travels, so I was really documenting what I did and I camped a lot, I hiked a lot, I, I backpacked a lot, I was very much into the outdoors and I would uh, photograph on slide film and then bring that film home and have slideshows to show my friends and uh, my family and they complimented me on my work and eventually that sort of reinforced my love of photography. Of someone like one of my photographs, I go, okay, why, you know? And then we photograph more and more uh, the subjects that people responded to more positively. I like to photograph things that are uplifting and that have uh, a natural beauty to them. The photograph should describe itself. Even if it was an important image to me when I photographed it. Like I might have gone to great trouble to photograph this, but later, uh, if I had to explain it too much, I realized it was a failure. In 1980, I was enrolled at Humboldt State University in Northern California. And since I had already photographed for five years, I had a lot of images sort of built up uh, they weren't very good, but I thought they were good. Every semester, I took another photography course and another one, and gradually I worked my way up to the advanced courses. They had a dark room, and we would uh, shoot on uh, negative film and then develop it in the dark room and then make prints and present them to the class, a typical photography course. I was just a geology major taking photos. But now that I look back on it, uh, Tom Knight, was probably the reason why I went to Humboldt to meet him and to be guided by his uh, expertise and his mastery of, of the medium. And uh, Tom Knight could see that I had uh, a talent for photography. So he basically inspired me to keep moving forward in his courses. And I think I took advanced photography six or seven times. In most art forms, uh, a person starts out by uh, imitation. They learn the history of the medium. And then gradually their own style starts to naturally evolve. So by the end of my uh, tenure at Humboldt State University, about 1984-85, I had already started to develop uh, even a deeper passion, but also my own style. When I came back from college, I built my own darkroom in my garage. My dad helped me. And then I gradually started uh, selling my work in restaurants in the late 80s. And you know, wherever I could hang my prints I, or sell them to friends or whatever I could do, just to make a little money so I could keep doing it. And I even tried doing some advertising photography and I, I had a rep, a rep for that. It really wasn't my thing. I'm really more of an artist. I need to be freer. I need to photograph without the stress of being hired to do it. You know, I could go out and do it on my own. A college friend of mine uh, married into a family of uh, horse people on the eastern side of the Sierras. In fact, his wife's parents owned the Mammoth Lakes pack outfit. And so he invited me to go on a horse drive where they moved the horses to different pastures in the se seasonally. And I started photographing uh, the cowboys and wranglers that were attached to that and horses and the tremendous, amazing landscapes of the Owens Valley. And so I could see how I could uh, kind of drift into photographing the equestrian west because it had all the elements. It had the, the people, the portraits, the landscapes, the action, the emotion, the reaction, all 
coming together in one whole. People know each other over long distances and it's all interconnected. So once I kind of got into this sort of network of everything, it, it, one thing would lead to another. And I photographed whenever I could afford it and get out there and do it. So it wasn't like constantly, it was often seasonally. Uh, but I made sure that when I photographed that I was looking for subjects or compositions that I hadn't already done before. I shot this with a 4x5 negative on a tripod. His name's Forrest. He's one of the top wranglers of the Eastern Sierras. And I could see in his face kind of this whole feeling of the Western writers. This sort of sense of being connected to the land. Uh, kind of a serious, rugged look. And I could see in his face that he had these incredible features, very much like the Farm Security Administration photography of Dorothy Lang and others. And so what I wanted to do is to contain the composition and sort of frame his face using his hat and pull in very, very tight. And also photograph at an angle up towards his face that kind of gives a traditional sort of monumental look to it. There's a sense that the camera doesn't exist at all. So if you look at my work in this gallery, you'll see that each image has kind of its own unique sort of character. It's not just a repetition of the same thing over and over again. You know, so I like, I wanted to get the perfect uh, branding shot, for example, you know, I want to get the perfect uh, the rodeo shot, but I'm not shooting the rodeo uh, in terms of just uh, someone riding a bull. That wasn't interesting to me. It was more of the environment, the people in the background. I used the depth of focus to isolate it. Everyone is uh, looking in the same direction, so there's this whole sense of direction and focus. All these people are reacting to the calf roper that went before this calf roper, but this calf roper is waiting, anticipating, and there's a sense of fear, almost anxiety. Uh, like anybody before a performance, they want to do well. In this image, you, you get a sense of the horse's anticipation, the horse's fear, the horse is wondering what's going to happen next. Uh, so you really connect with the personality of the horse and the rider at the same time and every single image in this exhibition is a different experience where I was sort of keyed into a certain aspect of it and I could see these things happening and I was there with my camera. So this is an image where I saw, I saw it a year before and then was able to um, capitalize on it by having the subject matter of the horse there a year later. So what I've created here is this sense of depth through perspective where you have the river going off into the distance, you have the trees gradually diminishing in size, and it's a hot day out there. So there's this really, this kind of feeling, not just of a visual event, but the sense of, of relaxation or t uh, experiencing the coolness of the, sh the shade of a cottonwood tree. In my work, I, I could see the sort of ebb and flow of things. I could see how things would kind of come together and then fall apart. And so there's this breathing effect of this heartbeat in the way life is. And then when it comes together in its maximum point, then you're right there right, right with your camera and then it kind of disperses into a randomness. One aspect of my career is shooting the same subject, the same person over a number of years. One of those people is Kansas Carradine, the daughter of David Carradine. She performed with the Riata Ranch Cow Cowboy Girls for about 10 years internationally. Here she is at Churchill Downs in Kentucky. And I saw her stretching before the performance where she does a back bend on a horse. And I saw this amazing configuration of the human form, the action, and then the light coming in from the right hand side. Uh, very, very diffuse light through the, this opening in this large space. And uh, it's a very, very pleasing photograph to me. All these images in here are shot for the darkroom. Because I've already gone through the process of like, well, what's this gonna look like in a negative? And am I gonna be able to make a print 
of it without a lot of trouble. So really you want to try to get the exposure right or get the situation right with the light the, when you shoot it. I shot a 35 millimeter up till about 1981, but there's a great camera out there called a Pentax 6x7, which is six centimeters by seven centimeters. So it had a longer and more rectangular format. And plus you got four times the detail of a 35 millimeter and I was in the detail because I wanted to blow my work up. The 6x7 was like a 35 millimeter that allowed me to uh, approach my subjects uh, with a, a fairly light camera without a tripod and get, grab more action shots. So I kept carrying, I kept up with my 6x7 to 2013 and it broke on me. And even when I shoot my digital camera now, uh, I have a Nikon. I, I, I still shoot the way I used to. I still shoot with the darkroom in mind, even though I don't have that darkroom, I have Photoshop, you know, but I'm still thinking in the same kind of terms as far as light, contrast, depth of field, the optics of the, you know, when I'm shooting. I think with digital, uh, there's so much more uh, range as far as lighting conditions go. Digital doesn't have the same gravitas as film does. I mean, with film, I got 10 images on a roll of film with my Pentax. So you can't just keep shooting and shooting. And if you're thinking in terms of, okay, how much is this going to cost me to develop this? And am I going to waste all my f film and money on stuff that really doesn't look that interesting? So gradually you start to focus more and more on the images you think are exciting, that have some kind of compositional element. Uh, if you're going to go on a photo shoot and you want to get a certain result, you can uh, meditate on the type of images you want before you even get there. So you can say, well, you can think to yourself, uh, this is the kind of a feeling I want to get for this image. And so there's this amazing connection that almost goes beyond reality, you know, it goes into other dimensions, you could say, that where you're, you're intuitively guided to these great images because you pre-visualize kind of where you want to go with your camera that day. For example, in my workshops, I can, I can teach the formula of the art of seeing, which can take almost anyone to a 95% level, you know. That extra 5% is something that's more philosophical, you have to be more intuitive, it's something you really can't teach people. What I would say to photographers that are emerging photographers is to learn to photograph in, in categories where they can organize their work in a way that makes sense rather than just random shots of this looks good, that looks good. Start understanding the world and how it's visually organized in terms of uh, the geometry of it all. The magic of photography is not really shooting something where you look at it and you go, wow, and then you forgot it already five minutes later. But if you look at a picture or photograph and your eye goes into it, it will always find a new thing to discover within that image. It's something that you see not only with your eyes, but with your heart. And that you can really convey feelings and emotions with, with photography as an art form. So it's more than just taking a picture. You're studying the world in a way that gives you philosophical insights insights into humanity. What is life about? What does it mean? And so really it's a learning process of self-discovery more than anything.